Hello and welcome to the second and long-awaited and anticipated OXM vodcast. That's right, yeah, we're back. Uh, this is the internet's most interactive... Ah! <laughs> it's the most interactive internet gaming show because we let... You know, <laughs> because we let you call the shots at www.oxm.co.uk www.3w's <laughs> Here's what's on the show. It took a monster effort to squeeze all this stuff into the next 20 minutes. Starting off, we do all the stunts you wanted to see in Crackdown. Next up, we interview Denby Grace, lead producer on The Darkness. One thing he absolutely insisted when we were recording the voice was we used no vocal effects on him whatsoever. Then, it's everything you wanted to know about Guitar Hero 2 in our Q&A session. And to round it all up, we have the brand spanking new trailer for Unreal Tournament 3. Before we go any further, I need to introduce you a friend of ours. He's going to be with us from here on in, and we like to call him Boom. Or, as Ben likes to call him, okay. Well, me and Oregs and Burbs this month have been playing a lot of Crackdown, probably spending way too much time on that, especially in the uh, excellent co-op mode. That's right. And um, we asked for your suggestions via our forums as to what we could do with our levelled up super cops, and here's our efforts on your behalf. Kicking it off, we have the suggestion from Road Warrior. He wanted to see the biggest, most spectacular car jump we could do. The next suggestion comes from Titan AE, who asked if we could create a domino chain of explosions. Clancy Fan wrote in and asked if it was possible to get a car inside the Los Muertos' Island Fortress. We went one better than that. not trying to go head to head with something like Gears of War or even Halo or anything like that. We don't see people playing it in, in clans and stuff like that. We don't. We just people see people play it, picking up for a blast, playing half an hour, an hour, and having just some good old fashioned fun. And we don't. We don't. We're not really aiming any higher than that. Like we would definitely say, 80% of our sort of strategy for the game is the single player, and then the multiplayer is a bit of a bonus for people. And again, it's just come come about from the actual gameplay we built for the single player. It just translates really well into a multiplayer game. There's always a lot of pressure whenever you release a game. Yeah. But with the darkness, we know we've got a good concept. We know we've got we've got a good scope. We've got plenty of tools to play with. And um, Top Care, the guys that license us the the actual IP, have really really let us do what we want with it. And Already they built the whole world of the darkness and there's so much stuff from us to draw on and we just think it's We're not really like any other game. It's more like it's like 
got the feel of Desperado or Equilibrium in film sort of wise when you play the game and as well as that throw in some superhero it, it isn't like a lot of other games at all and as well as that you've got the heritage of Riddick from Starbreeze's previous games we think people are going to just jump all over because Riddick was such a good game and all they're doing is building upon that reputation with the darkness. We got this writer on board, then we did a screenplay edit, and then what we did is we actually went out and got some good good actors. We didn't go for big names, we just wanted people who could act really well. We, Like you said, we actually have a guy in there from The Sopranos who plays your uncle Paulie, the girl from Six Feet Under, Lauren Ambrose, she plays your girlfriend, and also we have Mike Patton from Faith No More fame, who actually plays the voice in your head of the darkness. He's the guy that tells you all the crazy shit that you should be doing. Um, one thing he absolutely insisted when we were recording the voice was we used no vocal effects on him whatsoever. We needed something that was totally weird and out there, he'd do it himself. And I'm sure fans of Faith No More and Tomahawk and stuff like that will know exactly what we mean. And he, he just fits so well and he, he's just super cool. The whole thing with the game is we didn't really set out to have the game as split into levels, so to speak. We actually call them script layers, which is just the technical term we use, uh, the guys use at Starbreeze. But we didn't set, we set down to create, create locations within New York that the events of our story would take place in. And basically you can travel to these places whenever you want uh, via the subway system. And then at different times in our story, different events will happen at those places. With the other world, you kind of are transported to this other dimension which is the other world, which is like the place worse than hell, it's where Jackie sort of like, it's Jackie's personal hell, that's the way we're painting it, and you're kind of transported there with no control over that whatsoever, we can't reveal why at this moment in time, but you, people will get it when we go, we don't want to reveal why really, because the, the key is such a key point in the story, and then you're transported to the other world, and then you're kind of battling your way back to get back to New York, and get at your Uncle Paulie, so, the other world is like, it's more like a sort of Call of Duty feel to it, but it's like super dark, super twisted, like World War I sort of-esque, trench warfare. It's where you kind of find out more about yourself, more about the darkness, more about why you were the one chosen for the darkness. And it's intense, it's really, really intense, and it's, it, it, there's, there's a lot of stuff in there that people are just, will be like, what? the hell are you on about? But that is exactly the feeling we wanted to create. This is the point of the show where we answer your questions sent into the forum at oxm.co.uk. Okay, so let's kick off with our first question. First question comes from Dr. Frankenjam, and he's talking about Crackdown, and he wants to know if we can show him how long we can juggle cars, people, or each other with explosives in-game. Now, I'm... I'm sure you need something to actually do that quite well, don't you? And what is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, to get the achievement, uh, car juggler achievement, you need to have um, the car in here for at least five seconds. Um, so it's no easy task, really. But the only way to do that is to actually play through the game and unlock the homing rocket launcher. So first of all, you've got to blow the car up so it leaves, leaves the ground. So once it's in the air, you shoot it again, and then the missile will fly up. Because it's homing, you don't have to do any more work. It'll just hit the car, blow it up. Hit, and you just fire off another shot, lock on the game, you, you can just keep, keep doing it, yeah. But basically, it's, it's something that you can only do once you're at a certain level, really. Pretty much, yeah. I think you have a decent weapons uh, skill, and you also have to find the homing rocket launcher. Now, we're not going to tell you where that is, because it'll spoil things for you, but you know, it's no easy task to uh, get hold of it. Next question, and it's from Dr. Frankenjam. He's obviously a little bit cynical of uh, press releases. He says, uh, exactly how far does the completely free roamingness of the co-op stretch can you actually go around completing completely separate missions and not actually have any contact with each other? I mean, obviously, in the mm. game. Um, or have we, in fact, to in fact been lied to again? I don't yeah, know who's right. been lying to you. Oh, uh, yeah, I hope it you. wasn't us. Because uh, in the uh, review last month, I think we made it pretty clear that you could go yeah. in separate ways. Obviously, since then, um, the, the demo's been released, um, which is obviously slightly different from the full game. Mm. You level up a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, and the co-op actual settings in the demo is very different from the full game. The co-op settings, can you tell us, like, there's, there's, there's different ways you can actually do co-op online, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, um, the co-op on uh, Crackdown, you can do it over Xbox Live or you can do it over System Link. Um, and I think the difference between the full game and the demo is that on the full game, you can actually jump into a game at any point, just like Gears of War, you know, so you can yeah, just play in, the game. Jump out, yeah. As long as you've got, you know, set so your friends can join the game. 
and you're not like but in fact you don't, you, don't, you don't even have to you can no. actually set it so only friends can that's join right. your game yeah. or you can leave your game open so literally anyone can jump into your game which gives you a good advantage if you're just starting yeah the way it works is that progress is only saved on the host's machine right so um, the player who's joined the game co-op you know uh, they joined this hosted game will only see benefits from the, save their character stats but they won't actually see any of the progress saved so you know all the gang bosses you're defeating They'll pretty much, when it's you go back to your host. own machine, yeah. they'll be you know, still alive. But, but achievements are shared, is that right? Um, achievements are shared, I think, up to a point. I think you wouldn't be able to like, steal the other players' achievements. They'll still always be available for them. But there are co-op achievements built into the game as well. Because if you think about it, you know, with these kind of GTA games, um, sandbox games, they really are at their best you know, when you're showing off and with Crackdown, you've got a really good reason to show off because you've sure. got another player. You know. Can you jump into a co-op game and literally be on the other side of the island, just doing your own thing, mm -hmm. um, not having any part to do with the host, like, yep. in effect. Yep. I mean, the only, the only downside of that, if you've jumped into the game, would be that with, not, with no interaction to the host, once you jump back to your game, say you, you go off and defeat a boss on your own, when you go back to your game, he will still exist in your game. That's, that's correct, yeah, he, he'll still be there. It was a bit like when we are playing uh, Gears of War, trying to beat General Ram. It's like, yeah. on, on the same, really tough, and I yeah. couldn't do it without someone's help. So I think it can act as a kind of like a mini tutorial for you if you're stuck on one of the harder bosses. And let's face it, I mean, some of the bosses in this game are like solid, you know, I haven't been able to beat them. Um, but if there's the two of you, you, know, you can literally almost... Well, you can almost like have a war someone... of attrition, I suppose. You, know, you can wear the enemies down. You can keep respawning and go or, on. Or you can literally go... I mean, I remember when we, one of the first times I played co-op, um, we went for one of the bosses. Um, it was literally you left... Ben to actually deal with the boss whilst I was busy just keeping everyone else in the surrounding area out of the way. I think with co-op you'll probably find the game generally a bit easier. So in your face Frank and Jam, we don't lie. <laughs> so um, you seem to be getting into Guitar Hero 2 quite a lot yesterday, maybe enjoying it a little bit too much. It was um, awesome. Yeah it was really good. Uh, so what were your first impressions of the game? Well, you know, um, I've never played it before at, on any platform. I've seen it being played. I've even seen it at the, at the Download Festival being played on stage in front of thousands of people. Like, you know, it's every, every rocker's fantasy to be able to strap on a guitar, um, especially if you're not a guitar player, and uh, be able to play some of the, the best tunes that are out there. I mean, I loved it. The whole co-op play is amazing that you can play and you've got, you know, a bass yeah. guitarist alongside you. So... Myself and Gillen, we, we, uh, we had a ball yesterday afternoon. It's another one to add to the collection of games that are coming out this mm. year that I really want to get hold of. I think it's one of those games that kind of sucks you in, um, into the kind of illusion that you're actually playing the guitar. Yeah. It's very unusual. Like, these interactive games, they manage to do that in a way that in normal games you're playing with a controller don't. Yeah, so, As course. I was playing the bass guitar, you know, moving my fingers up and down, it was the same kind of action, you know. I mean. the, the funny thing as well is that when, when you see people playing it who obviously have a handle on it and have played it, you know, other iterations in the franchise, they are... Uh, it's not so much about staring at the screen and, and, and pressing the buttons in key. It's about actually looking like a bit of a rock star. I mean, uh, you see people's legs getting wider apart. They're putting hats on to look like Slash. <laughs> Standing it's, up on chairs. It's yeah. get, it gets yeah. ridiculous. It's, some might say, you know, it's, uh, it's like having a sports car for a man. Mm. It's an ultimate extension of your <coughs> <coughs> schlong. But... Um, you know, it was. There was a lot of posturing in the office yesterday, and it was uh, not necessarily the best thing to see, but whilst I was in the position of doing the posturing, it was a good thing to feel. Yeah, so it gives you a bit of an ego, I think. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. kind of like when you're playing I, it, I, and you're you know, doing okay, you're doing half decent. Everyone a, comes on and have a, a look. I need a bit of an ego. I need a bit of I mean, my <laughs> ego's it's, it's diminished. <laughs> okay. Um, I would say yes. Um, uh, there are going to be extras on the 360 version. Um, although uh, online play co-op and against each other, in fact, hasn't actually been confirmed over live yet, um, chances are that it will be coming. may not necessarily at launch or with the retail versions um, when they go on sale, but it could be a downloadable extra. And I think the, the downloadable extras in general sort of make uh, a game like that stand out. And if, you know, if rumours are to believed, uh, we've got Drum Villain on the way, um, and with the co-op play with yourself and a friend, either over live or in the same room with a bass guitar and a lead guitar, you could eventually have your own um, online virtual band. And um, I don't think the PS2 really offers you that option. So I would say yes, but then I'm biased. I really like the idea you could start up like your whole band. So exactly. you have drum hero, uh, guitar villain, guitar hero exactly. all playing. You, know, you could work together. Imagine like an you online even... battle of the bands. <laughs> yeah. You could even sing you know, through the uh, Xbox Communicator. No, that's recommended. No, I'm not going to start now. No, I, don't, I don't think <laughs> Ben should ever sing. <laughs> Let's leave that for another show. Okay? <laughs> okay, so that's it for another very special OXM podcast. 
On the next show, we'll have some special behind-the-scenes footage at Midway's Gamer event from Las Vegas, cool. and lots more. So until then, take it easy. Christian Slaters. In 2291, in an attempt to control violence among deep space miners, the Leandring Mining Corporation established a series of leagues and bloody public exhibitions. For 50 years, the fight's popularity grew with their brutality. Then, the war came. From the dark depths of space, the Necros armies attacked the Tyrrhenian mining colonies. The Tricasts called it a corporate skirmish, but you lost everything. Your family, your friends, your entire clan. Now you're fighting for all you have left. Revenge. From Epic Games, the studio that brought you Gears of War, Unreal Tournament 3.